Hello and welcome to day 11 of my Just Chip It challenge. Today was um, a day mainly dominated by my podcast. <laughs> so I did a lot of podcast work. I had to, on Tuesday, there's a new episode coming out. So um, I was mainly uh, doing some editing for that. And um, yeah, it took me quite some time because Sometimes I not only do the podcast, but also like the, the video. And this time I did podcast with the video and this always takes me quite some time. I don't have a really good process for that figured out yet. And so, yeah, I was um, first uh, merging together the different um, things. So I'm normally doing the, the video via Zoom and then the audio uh, with Zencaster because the quality is much better than with Zoom. Uh, but this also means that I have to merge the two, actually I get two tracks out of uh, Zencaster and then the video and synchronize that and somehow I do that by, by hand um, in Adobe Premiere and then render the whole thing out. And I had also to set a little bit like a nice um, background and then I was editing the thing. So this took me quite some time. So um, I did a lot about uh, a lot today on the podcast instead of the tool. Uh, but now since uh, some time I'm sitting actually on the tool and I'm super, super excited to work on it again. Um, I'm very, very excited. So I don't think that I will be super long in this stream today. I, I wanted to go with you uh, through some of the things that I have done now um, and, and, and show you what I'm working on right now. But then I probably will end the stream and work a little bit more in silence and very focused um, because, yeah, I cannot work as focused if I'm on the stream um, as I normally work. Maybe this will ha uh, change over time when I'm more used to streaming. Uh, but right now, that's not the case, right? So, as always, let's start with our wonderful Twitter um, update. And um, I will show you again because it's so interesting. What I'm doing here, right? So we go to Twitter and let's draft that um, twi tweet uh, together. No, we have to go on profile. And then, oh yeah, they are, yesterday I started um, putting some of the videos actually on YouTube so that they are not vanishing. So I'm, I'm going to do that today as well. Um, so day nine, that should be actually a day 10, right? Day, day 10, right? Now we have like day 11 today was mostly about, oh my God, about the SE Unlocked podcast, podcast. Uh, oh my God, I cannot type anymore about the SE Unlocked podcast, but now, but now I'm back working on tool. Um, right now, analyzing several PRs um, by hand is somehow strange. It's not really by hand. How do you say in English? Mm. I'm not really. So what we are going to do on the stream today is not analyzing with the tool, right? They have the tool, but we are looking at different PRs and try to extract some patterns. So right now, um, analyzing PRs um, manually, let's call it just manually, uh, to identify, identify interesting patterns. Come join me, join me doing so on Twitch. Right, so, and then we put, this was my thing. I think I have to sneeze. Oh. Right point, pointing backhand. So, oh, index, what's happening here? Okay, and then let's put um, the tag that we are actually, because this is the woman make, woman, make challenge. I either wrote it wrong or something happens here. Woman make challenge um, and then indie hackers. So, um, so this one, maybe I, did I make a mistake here? Women make challenge. 
I don't know. I don't see. I don't see anything wrong with it, but maybe it's just me. Um, yeah. So let's tweet that out, and then I'm all yours. I'm always curious, so let's see what happened here. Sorry, I'm really a person that <laughs> like like this. It's movie. How is it called? Um, social dilemma, right? <laughs> I'm like that. There is some button somewhere telling me that there's a new notification. I have to click it. There is no work way around, and um, this infinite scroll really bad for me. Really bad for me because I feel like I have to scroll forever. I um, try not to do it, so I'm actually. Maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know how compared to the the general, you know, average person. Um, but yeah, this scroll is something that I really don't like. And so for me, Twitter, um, yeah, I never try to catch up. I'm, I'm following probably too many people to be even able to follow up. Uh, but still that there is always something to scroll makes me very nervous. And so, yeah, I actually would also like if there is more a more chronological order to it and not this algorithm paced uh, thing but that's that's how it is and so we have to deal with it um anyway so what i wanted to do with you a little bit is um i wanted to go over and look at some prs and see if we can extract something interesting from it that we can see something you know that we can learn some patterns and um, especially for the metrics that we are uh, developing understand a little bit what's going on here and so uh, one of the projects that I'm currently analyzing is the Apache um, CouchDB on GitHub, right? So let's go and I'm going to share my screen. going to share my screen over here. So, um, oh, sorry. Let's quickly do that. See, that's exactly how I am, right? Hi again. Can I be assigned to this? Um, yeah. Um, great. Are for sure so and then thanks for working on it right and we assigned a person so as I said yeah I'm, I'm social dilemma I'm exactly that person right social dilemma the one that all these algorithms are designed for that you look at it and you think like oh I have to act like there there was a there was actually a discussion uh, recently um, I think I read it on Hacker News and it was like, like about, do we have like free will? And then there was like, a, oh, I think it was an indie hacker actually that started, this was the story. Yeah, there was an indie hacker that started his blog um, and apparently he's a very philosophical person. And so his first blog was about, um, do we have a free will? And he was going on and on and on, showing that we don't have a free will and that we are just, you know, like puppets. Uh, reacting to things and that actually um, our brain already knows what's going to do before we realize that we are going to do this right so you're like I'm thinking I'm gonna do that but actually there was already um, there were already things that uh, in my brain like some connections some 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 signals that decided before I decided that I'm gonna do this anyway I'm not really a, a big uh, philosopher but uh, yeah was was a little bit interesting to read I wasn't completely into it but uh, was interesting and then today I thought I, I, I saw another discussion about free will and that we actually don't have um, one and um, yeah and advertisement and things like that I sometimes try to explain to my kids uh, wh why advertisement is bad right so because they are playing for example on the on the phone and then um, a lot of phones are made in a way, or phones, uh, games on the phone are made in a way that you have to wait for something. Uh, and instead of waiting that you can, for example, try again this level, wherever you played, you can watch an ad, right? And so my, my five-year-old apparently doesn't understand, or obviously doesn't understand why it's not good to watch that ad. And um, so I try to explain it a little bit. And this has to do with free will again, right? So that we are thinking that it, it doesn't impact us that we are watching this uh, advertisement, uh, but somehow it plants somehow a tiny seed, you know, that we are going to do something that actually is not our free will. Anyway, hi, Rich, nice that you are here. You're very consistent. Um, that makes me very happy that you are here every time. 
So I'm not gonna click on these pull requests, even though I was like, oh, there's like something happening here. I'm not going to do this. I actually wanted to go to Apache Couch DP. So let's do that. And then, um, so maybe that was, was free bill, right? That I'm not clicking on this one here. So, and then I wanted to um, analyze some of the interesting pull requests. And um, so one of the, um, one of the things that I find interesting is like uh, rubber stamps, right? People want to know how rigorous their code review practice is. This is something that um, when I'm consulting with organizations uh, on code review practices, this is definitely something that comes up. So how do we know, you know, how, how much rigor engineers put into their, their code review practices? How do we know that they are not rubber stamping or we are thinking that people are rubber stamping? So something like this. And it's really difficult, right, to say. Um, but let's look at some of the pull requests. I'm just opening up one and then here in my Python thing, I actually have a few, I have a few uh, numbers here that are apparently very shallow um, PRs. So this is something that I want to look at. Is that the one? Minor uninstall Unix MD patches backboard of main minor tweaks so minor something right minor tweaks la 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 there's one commit there's one file change let's look at this okay and then um, let's look at the conversation merged so apparently there was um, no review, right? There was no review and um, it's something minor. So let's, let's put that down here. Um, I'm gonna make somewhere I put my notes. Do you remember where I put my notes last time? Somewhere in my notepad, <laughs> like I always do. Um, I don't know, there are so many. Oh, nodes, API endpoints. So these were my API endpoints nodes, right? So now, now, now we are just making some nodes for rubber stamps. Right? I'm not the best note taker, to be honest. Rubber stamps. So, well, this is just minor changes, right? So we have uh, like, so. PR for the sake of PRs, I think, just put it in master. Well, you know, there's still um, there's still some benefits because if you just put it in masters, people are not that aware, right? So I think that if you have, if you have like a, if you have like, sorry, too many things open again. If you have something like this, oh, I put it over here. Um, you could actually commit it to master, but if you're working on a team, people wouldn't be aware, so, um, this is still nice because you can look at it and understand a little bit what happened. I mean, you could also look at the commit history, but well. Um, and then there are others. Let me see. So this one is uh, quite understandable. Why right? there is not a PR, right? It would be strange if you need some improvement for that, uh, approval for that. So let's look at this one. Fix flaky couch views active task test. Okay, so a test apparently. Um, code is written and works correctly. So there are some check marks that they have here. Checklist like a PR documentation changes. Yeah, you could look at the, the, the commit. Um, but I think with the, with the PRs, it's less, um, with, there are probably more commits than you have like PRs. So somehow it's, I think it's aggregating and um, reducing a little bit of your workload. And there's the explanation, but fix flaky active test, task test. Approved. Look, there's actually approval, right? So approve these changes. It was probably quick. I don't know if I see here. Oh yeah, I see the, the, the date. Let's look at the date. So this was September 10, 9, 59. And when was this created? So how long does this actually take, right? Oh, see. This person created. GMT plus one. I'm just looking at the if there is some strange thing in there, but it's the same time zone. So one minute later, this person approves, right? So it's it's also very clear that they already communicated before because two different people, right? 
and then they delete the branch here. Let's have a look at the files um, a little bit at least. Yeah, okay. So, um, so tests actually, right? Tests, and then it's like um, two people very closely, time-wise, right? Very timely, timely um, approval, because there was actually approval even of this, of this change, right? Um, I think that's especially important if you're using CI, CD, you don't want to go building every commit that if the commit is a work in progress and fails, for example. Hi, fizzy bleed twitching. <laughs> I completely screwed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> visibly, visibly, visibly twitching. I don't know. I hope I, I said it correctly, but hi, you, you're laughing. Okay. So how do you pronounce it? Can you, can you write some phonetics here for me that I know how to pronounce it? It's nice that you're here. So I have another one that we have to go over. It's a play on words, yeah, that I didn't get, but, but maybe also because it's over there. Let me have a look at it. Oh, visibly twitching. Oh, yeah, I like it. It's a non-native speaker. It took me a while. And also because it's over there and I don't want to look there too much. Um, so what happens here? Unlink index pit and swallow exit message if present swallow exit message sometimes i really think how the world how the programming world for, feels for people that are native speakers and how it and if there is some some theories around how it feels actually for uh, for non-native speakers so if i'm if i'm reading this like unlink index pit and swallow exit message if present <laughs> Um, I probably have a very different uh, story in mind than a native speaker, I guess. So this should prevent unexpected exit messages arriving with which crash couch index server. So this sounds like an important thing, right? Patch suggested by David Sp. David Sp. Closes. So what happens here? Um, well, I know this person is very senior in this whole uh, thing, right? Um, but apparently there is no, there is no uh, code review happening here. Okay, there's also not much that changed. But it seems like an important uh, patch or something, right? So maybe it's even, I don't know, I could just guess that this is maybe something that even circumvents a review that you want to have it um, uh, checked in quite quickly. Even checked it into a very strange or, or very concrete release thing, right? Release branch here, I would say that that's what's happening. So we have one commit, unleak index bits follow message if present. I don't know exactly. What do you think? Do you think like this is this is something really crashed? Um, couch index server crash. 3.x right so um it seems that it's uh it's a hot fix right sort of right i would say it's a hot fix would you say it's a hot fix i'm gonna write this here hot fix because for me it looks like a hot fix um Um, so what are you talking about? You can solve that with git pre push hook and run CI locally, but committing to main branch changes your development practice and is quite different to feature branching. You could, but pre commit hook can be overwritten. I suppose it depends if you're working in a team or not. Personally, I like the flow of feature branching in pure into master. Yeah, I think if you're working on a on a team, I also would prefer that. Um, it's just there's more visibility around it and it's just clearer what happens. Um, so let's look at, at the different PR here. I have a, a couple that I analyzed and that I somehow 
um, have on my on my rubber stamp list, uh, but the why is always different, as we can see. Um, what's here? Fix compactor bind MS sort clause. And compactor finds an old com compaction file before the state was upgraded to proper list. The state would be root, blah, blah, blah. blah. To a lot of length fixes something, right? This person approved. Let's have a look at the time again. 5, 12. 5, 40, so a little bit. Oh, there's a plus one actually. There's even a comment. There's like a plus one and a comment. It seems okay, right? I mean, what does the commit say? How do you mean which which commit? From this um, from this one? Are you talking from this um, from this PR, Rich? When is integer or when is list? Oh, for the previous. Mm, let's have a look. The same thing. Okay, now I'm going, I think I go too much backwards. Now I'm completely lost. Now I'm just putting that in again. So, um, yeah, for this one, there's actually a plus one happening. Um, we have to analyze this one. Um, let's have a look at Postman. And actually, Rich, I know how to make that better for you. Because first I didn't know, right? You were saying you're not seeing anything. So there's a zoom in thing. <laughs> I hope this works better. Um, and so what I wanted to do is uh, analyze this one here really from the, um, from the API perspective. There we have the state closed. There's the number. And then what I wanted to go actually down there is about the comments, right? So we have zero comments zero review comments commit addition deletions okay um so i was um i was a little bit confused because there are like these plus ones and so um if you recall i don't know did we do this yesterday no i think the day before yesterday uh, we were looking at you know what what those messages are right and if they are coming up as a Review comment is a comment, and this apparently is a review, right? So this is something that I don't see. So if there's somebody gives a plus one, and apparently this was done in the review flow, right? If you're saying, if you're looking at the file changes and then you say um, approve, uh, he probably left a comment and this is what I'm seeing here. And so then per that person merged something and deleted and that's it, right? So um, this is why I wanted to just see what's actually happened here in the API and um, it's indeed like the comment uh, count is zero, the review count is zero. And then if you're looking at the reviews, I think it's called just reviews, um, we should actually see the JSON um, of this plus one thing that happens here, right? Body plus one, yeah, and the state approved. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I don't know exactly how I can classify this one, but this was just a quick, <laughs> a quick um, review. I mean, this is really small, right? Of a small, of a small change um, with no suggestions. There was actually a plus one, plus one comment on approval. So what I'm doing here, and uh, maybe I'm, I'm explaining a little bit my process. This is also how I did my research or my research uh, projects at Microsoft or how we do them, right? A lot of researchers do that like this. So we have first have like a manual uh, process 
And this could go on for, you know, a lot of different uh, PRs because what you want to have is saturation, right? So right now I'm writing down the different um, observations that I have, right? So for example, right now I try to understand um, some PRs with the specific characteristics. Right now I call them reverse stamps, which is not, I mean, it's a very loose concept right now, but it's um, PRs where I don't have a lot of reviews that are happening, a lot of comments that are happening, right, that are really quickly going through. And so I try to understand really what are the causes and there's no uh, program that can do that right now. So program cannot give, even if you have like uh, machine learning and things like that, um, this comes afterwards, right? First, what you have to do is actually a manual process. So what I'm doing right now, and which I will do for uh, quite some time, is I'm going through some of those uh, PRs, um, especially with some characteristics, and then I try to extract what's actually happening here. Um, and I will do that until there is saturation. Saturation means that I'm not adding anything new to this list, right? So I have like minor changes and there are some keywords, for example, this is interesting for classifiers later on um, or tests, right? Hot fixes. Uh, now we have like quick re reviews and we have some char characteristics, how that looks like. Um, and so I will look, let's say for 50 more PR, something like that. And I will add more and more of those things. And then at one point I will see, oh, actually um, this PR falls again into this category, right? Or this PR falls in this category. And so saturation appears um, or occurs if there are no new patterns and no new observations. So you're seeing the same thing over and over again and you can cast classify it in somewhere. And so at the same time, we hopefully will uh, see some features or some um, interesting uh, patterns that we can actually use later on for machine learning uh, because what we want to do is not um, we don't want always uh, I don't want to do that right and uh, the, the the companies that I'm working with and the PR managers and the, the the leads and the devs they don't want to do that they don't want to go to the through the PRs and you know one by one analyze them um, and understand what's going on but they want somebody else a program to do that and so we try to first understand what's happening and you can do this for every domain right for everything that you would like to um, have some for example some AI spark some magic uh, behind the first step will probably be that you're really understanding the data that you're dealing with uh, manually so you're looking at the data you're extracting some patterns and um, you see what's actually happening here and then based on uh, what you're seeing here and if you're find some saturation, some patterns, you can then apply some, some machine learning algorithms on that. Well, let's have a look at another one and see. Right now we have each one that I'm opening, <laughs> we have a different story to tell, right? The different pattern actually. Um, so we are far from saturation, uh, but yeah, it's just the beginning, right? Add, back, R, and um, read and write, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> read and write options. <laughs> um, so, overview. So this is a, a person that I haven't seen uh, contributing to this project yet. So interesting testing recommendation, checklist. Um, this person approved. Let's have a look at the time. 8.13, approved at 8.20. So seven minutes. So this is quite quick. And so what happened, this person just approved, there is no thing. Um, let's have a look again. I don't understand what's really happening here. Back, add back, read and write option. Add back means probably like revert, reverse something, right? Something that they did. This caused a breaking change in some clients. We added read and write back temporary. Okay, so actually we revert something. Again, I would say, I mean, just a hunch that this is... Um, this is some, somehow a quick fix as well, right? So where is it going? Prototype? Yeah, not really. Doesn't look like it's going as, as a hot fix somewhere, um, but at least they're they are reverting something that they have done before. So they think that, you know, if you're doing something, if you're removing or putting something back, it doesn't change much, right? Um, so yeah, let's think about uh, this. Is this a new category or is it something that we have seen again? I would say it, it's definitely a, a subcategory of this hotfix. Um, but I make a new one. Revert, revert, uh, previous, change, change. It's a small PR and um, approval within a few minutes. So I. I guess that 
they knew about it, right? They communicated about it somewhere else, maybe in a in a chat or something like that in a Slack. Um, so they knew what's going to happen. They already decided to do that, and then well, this doesn't seem like a, a, a big a big change, right? So everything. I mean, something that we have seen now for all of them is that only one file was changed, and only really a few lines were changed. So um, overall observation. Observation, one file changed, only a few lines changed. And I think all of them were sort of minor except the hotfix, right? I mean, this is how I would, would describe what we see. Rich says, um, if you target customer using GitHub, maybe your tool can be a GitHub action. I thought about this. I haven't completely decided what how how it looks like. Um, it could be a GitHub action. I thought about it. Um, maybe it will hook into it a little bit like this. Uh, but yeah, I don't know exactly. I'm also thinking about having like an extension, a browser extension, so that I can do much more with the with the visceral um changes on on github right because with the with the github action you're really limited what you can do and so if it would be a browser extension um you could really change a lot uh, but it also means that it's very brittle if something changes on github <laughs> i'm sort of screwed <laughs> um so yeah i haven't completely decided how i'm how i'm gonna do it um for now it will not be integrated that much it will be separated um just uh, for for simplicity reasons so is there another one maybe one more uh, that i'm gonna do with you and then i'm probably gonna end this stream and do a, a little bit more of them uh, because i have to do many to really understand what's going on here fixed compiler warning overview fixed compiler warning okay testing recommendation make check related issues are pull request checklist code written changes covered by test and you will know, another person right so one person another person approved these changes let's have a look at the time i don't really know what's happening here but um, fixed compiler warning doesn't seem very uh, drastic <laughs> it doesn't seem like a drastic change 712 and then we have like here oh there we are two AM. So this person is actually working in a different time zone, I think. Um, so what is that? 7 p.m. And then we have like two. So it took a, a while for this approval. There's actually a plus one as well. Um, let's look at the file. I'm expecting this is a, a very small um, thing, right? Okay. Get local dog body future. So I would also say is a minor change, it's sort of a minor change. I don't know exactly how to categorize it. Minor changes, keyword minor. There's not really a keyword minor, but fix compiler warning. Yeah. Fix warnings, I mean, it's not minor change. Maybe this can be really a, a subcategory, right? Fix compiler warnings and then we have like small change no, this was not so fast turnaround but um, just plus one how oh, seven um uh, seven hours turnaround is not that it's not that um you're sending me one thank you update main with the last 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 Elixir porting related commits. Ooh, nice one. 29 files changed, seven commits. Okay. This PR updates main from master with the latest commit on Elixir port process, right? A port process. Proposal for removing JavaScript test from main build process users.
yeah something happening here right i mean quite a bit things right test so what do you think about it there's like a comment coming it out saying not gonna load dip github says i cannot handle that pr it's too big What's really a shame here, I think, is that many of, I mean, a lot of files are, a lot of files are touched, right? Um, and somehow there, there could be, I mean, um, there could be just a better visual representation of those changes, right? So that you could um, make it easier for the reviewer to actually look at it and to see what's happening. Somehow it's also to be expected that it will ripple through some of the the files but as you can see here i mean there's a pattern here right so what's happening over here for all of those files is sort of yeah very very similar right yeah what should i say related issues or pull request right i mean look at this list it's already long it would be interesting to see how how much they actually discussed it outside of the pull request already before doing it right i mean at least some of those um things they probably talked already how they are going to do it see there are several linked pull requests I mean, this is ongoing work. Somehow related to what's happening here, right? And they're discussing what he has to do in those previous PRs. Ten days ago. Let's have a look a little bit at the time frame, right? Ten days ago. Six days ago. Six days ago. And then we have like five days ago, four days ago. Oh, this is another one. We should close that. And this is the same one, right? That you had like. Let's close some of them. I'm getting confused. Yeah, not a lot of things happening here, right? But what we can see is that there are related issues or pull requests that are somehow related. Um, and there is some side conversation happening, right? But this is definitely, I mean, this is the odd one out, right? From the list that we had here. Um, so let's note that one, but maybe make it a little bit separate so that we know those are actually, I mean, maybe have the overall uh, observation should be part of this one, right? And then we have like another one over there is like, um, large 
PR um, without without discussion. And I think it was quite quickly um, was quite quickly approved. I forgot a little bit what we had here. Um, so this was eight thirty, and this was like yeah, quickly approved. Um, but it really looks like they had a lot of side conversations here. Um, without discussion, quickly approved. approved. And then um, what else? Sorry, we have to do that here. Quickly approved. Um, lots of side PRs are, are related, related um, and previous PRs and work done. Lots of discussion there. They're linked in in description, right? So that, that's also something that we are seeing here. Um, is the committer just cherry picking commits from master? So that's a good question. Let's have a look. Um, that's a good, good question for, for investigation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say just based on description, this PR updates main from master with the latest commits. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, could be that he's just um, adding things, cherry picking and adding it here so people know already what's what's actually happening. Right? Yeah. Have to look at this a little bit more uh, deeply for for the thing, but um, based on yeah, you're right. I haven't thought about this. This PR updates main from master with the latest uh, commits of the Elixir port process. Yeah. Yeah. This is really the odd one out, right? Um, how do I call it? Odd one out. <laughs> um, outlier. I'm gonna do it like this. Sorry, okay. Yeah, cool. Well, I actually worked on all of the the PRs that I had thought of. And um, I'm going to investigate a little bit more um, what's happening here, but I have to uh, find a different tool for doing so. Um, probably use the Git, Git patch for looking at that. I, um, but this is an interesting one. I think that I don't know, none, none of those are really easy to detect. Um, there are a few things that we could, right? Um, but what I think was really interesting is that each of the PRs that we looked at had really a different a different cause. Um, and, and I think most of them were quite obvious and also okay, right? It was, was not like it's a red flag where you think, oh my God, they, you know, there's this... Um, there's this PR and we actually expect a lot of conversation happening and uh, there isn't. Uh, but on the other hand, we thought like, well, this, these are minor issues or, you know, 
it's a compiler warning, <laughs> a compiler warning, right? Um, and uh, our tests or hot fixes where we also expect uh, the code review process to go to go fast. And this one was really the the odd one out. I'm gonna investigate a little bit more. Um, but I think chickpea surprise your theory is very very spot on. Um, so probably this is really work that has already been reviewed, has been seen already. Um, we started also with the related PRs and so people will know that I think there will was probably side discussion on this as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, do a few more. I don't think I'm gonna do them today uh, because here it's, it was much longer on the stream that I anticipated. I thought I, we are going to do like 15 minutes. Um, so I probably just go to sleep and uh, pick that up tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, it was really cool uh, doing this again with you. I hope I will be online um, tomorrow again. Let me see. Huh. There we go. And yeah, that's more or less it. I have a few other things. I mean, I think the, the next few days will be really about very much what we did right now looking at some of the, the PRs, some interesting PRs, trying to find some interesting PRs. So uh, Rich, your your input was really, really helpful because you know there's a, this sheer complexity of a lot of PRs. And so um, I don't go through each one of them. Um, I did that at the beginning a little bit, but now I'm more or less um, looking at some of the characteristics of some of the PRs uh, based on the metrics and, and see you know what, what's happening here. So if you have interesting one, um, I'm always happy if you can send them to me. Uh, some of the projects that I'm analyzing right now is the Apache CouchDB. Then I'm looking at TensorFlow as well, TensorFlow, TensorFlow, uh, because they are using pods. So this is interesting as well. Let me see what, what others. Um, let me have a look here. Um, my development and then analytics data, right? So Apache Airflow is uh, some that I scraped some data. Facebook React, Flutter. Um, and I'm looking at JetBrains, Kotlin as well, and TensorFlow. So those are the things that I'm that I'm analyzing a little bit. So if some of them are interesting to you, or what, what's happening to my camera? I don't know. Completely blurry. Ah. Um, yeah. Cool. So that's it for today. I hope to see you tomorrow. Um, and yeah, thanks for for watching my stream. <laughs> bye bye.